Well, if we don't have the right fuel in our bodies, we're never going to um, be healthy. Um, it affects everything that you do. If you don't eat enough, you have no energy. Um, if you don't eat the right things, you can develop lots of other sort of healthcare problems. Fluids are hugely important as well. If you don't drink enough and become dehydrated, makes you unwell, um, makes you feel dizzy, makes you feel sick, puts you off your food, um, and it's just vital for everything. Um, in, in my role as, as continence advisor, uh, I come across people all the time uh, who have problems with constipation. Uh, we all know that um, diet affects constipation, but, but people really don't have the level of understanding about their diet that they perhaps could have. Um, there's lots of information available, and it, it's a question of just keeping an eye on things, and, and if the, the bowel's a bit sluggish, think about what's causing that. So we need um, plenty of fiber in the diet, and we also need a good routine. Um, the bowel loves to have a routine, so the timing of meals is really important for that as well. Um, there's a system called the, the gastrocolic reflex that kicks in when you eat. Um, so 20 to 30 minutes after a meal is a really good time to have a bowel movement. And if people don't get to sit on the toilet at that time, they don't go. Um, and they can end up really constipated and really uncomfortable. That in itself puts you off eating and you just get into a real vicious circle. Um, but also um, fluid is really important. If you don't drink enough um, and you become dehydrated, it also has an effect on the bowel. So that, that what you're going to pass is more dehydrated, more difficult to pass. So the whole process affects everything to do with the body. If you lack energy, you might stand the risk of falling. Um, Eating makes you feel good, especially if you're eating in company. So if you get a bit low in mood, then it puts you off your food as well, and you tend to eat less. Um, it's, it's just hugely important for every aspect of life, especially for older people. So care staff can help that process um, by, by noticing, by being aware, being alert to what's going on around them noticing if someone's eating well, noticing if they're not eating well, making sure that, that they're sitting beside people that they enjoy sitting with, and the reverse of that, not sitting beside people they don't enjoy sitting with. Um, and, and just keep an eye on what's happening in the dining room. Try and, and create a lovely, relaxed, comfortable atmosphere where people don't feel rushed, they don't feel criticised if they make a mess, and, and providing um, as much help as the person needs in, in a, a subtle way without making the person feel that they're, they're having help, not standing over cutting things up but sitting beside them. And, well, people who um, prefer to walk around and don't like to sit still, um, first and foremost, if they are sitting at a table in the dining room and it happens to be a meal time, give them a meal quickly without waiting. Uh, and that they might eat some then. Um, but I've found that um, even just walking along beside someone with a plate of food, um, they, they will take food from it, especially if they think it's mine. <laughs> Sometimes that if I pretend to eat something, someone will pinch it off my plate. Um, but it's, it's being creative. I think the, the whole approach has to be creative. Um, and. Um, uh, a home that, that I worked in, um, the chef was very creative with how he provided food. And he made little um, pots of food and put them in this, this lady's handbag. So she always had food in her bag when she needed it and she could just pull it out. She, she didn't really remember it was there, but she discovered it every now and then and, and had something to eat. Leaving food around the place it can work really well too. Um, there are challenges along with that, but, but that's really good. And of course, fluids are so important as well. So having fluid stations around the place or just handing someone something to eat or something to drink at regular intervals throughout the day can really help. So people who don't eat what, what is considered to be a normal diet that everyone else has, for example, people who are vegetarian, uh, like myself, will really enjoy having a choice. Um, I still go out sometimes for meals as a vegetarian and find that, that there's lots of choice for everybody else, but there's only one vegetarian option. And if I don't like it, that's tough. 
So I think it's really important to, to bear in mind that, that people have all sorts of beliefs and, and all sorts of uh, physical and health needs for specific types of diet. Um, but they need a choice as well. It's, it's not just in, good enough to say, oh, well, we've, got, we've put on a special diet for you and this is what it is. It's important to, to work with the person to find out what they like and, and try to give as much choice as possible. Special diets are not an added extra. They're what that person believes they need or what they do need. Uh, and it's just part and parcel of, of life. And we should always just look at it as that. It's, we're looking after the person's physical health care and social needs and that is just another aspect of it. Assessment is really important um, and working out what, what the, the right diet for the, the person is, is, is vital to their care. I found that having the, the whole staff group involved, not just the care staff, made a huge difference. So the, the, the kitchen staff, the chef down to the kitchen assistants all knew when people were on special diets and, and it was them actually that informed the care staff what that person should be eating. And I found that they took great ownership and they became creative and, and they, they worked to try and get food that the person would enjoy. Um, and that worked really well for me. I think it's just important that um, when making sure that people receive the, the right kind of food and the right kind of support that, that the person is involved at every step of the way. Um, we need to know what their habits have been before they came into care but we also need to acknowledge that even with that information the person might feel differently. Uh, as people age very often their taste buds change uh, so they might not enjoy the things that their family are insisting that they enjoy uh, and it's really important that we all approach it as a team so it's the, the, the service user, the staff and, and the person's family as well so that everybody understands we're trying to provide the best for that person and, and why it might be that the favourite meal that they've eaten for years they no longer like, or even the timing of, of meals. Uh, so it's, it's teamwork that is really essential. If somebody um, through the assessment process appears to be becoming at risk um, or, of poor diet or, or of malnutrition, it's really important to, to know that there are other people out there who are experts who can help. Um, so if somebody's having difficulty perhaps with, with swallowing, um, it's really important to, to get the speech and language therapist involved. Um, if somebody's losing weight and continuing to lose weight and, and their appetite is poor, um, it's important to find out what food they like to eat and make sure that that is available, um, but also to involve the dietitian where necessary. Um, and if somebody's on supplements, the, it's important to remember that the supplements are not there instead of the food. Supplements are there to eat after the food. Um, the food is the most important part of it.